Hello, everybody, and welcome to our Survivor Series 2014 preview show with just me at the moment and my special guest, Mr. Justin Robert Young. Hi, I like talking about wrestling. <laughs> do. I want to make sure that we can try and get Justin on for the big four pay per views of the year. So, like I said, obviously, we can block the wrestling into sort of sections and we can see how things have progressed throughout the year. And uh, the last time, obviously, we, we had you on, Justin, was uh, SummerSlam, where I think it was it Kieran and me had spent about 10 minutes trying to describe or work out our future of John Cena, and obviously you came up with the who gives a shit about John Cena, it's John Cena, which is completely true. Yeah. yeah. Um, and now we're going into the Survivor Series with Team Cena and Team Authority. So <laughs> let's get straight into the Survivor Series, because this is going to be, I think, a very UK... Raw based, but into the Survivor Series show because obviously the WWE is over here current. Or I think, or they've just finished their European tour. They've flown flown back to America now. They've just finished yeah. their European tour. They've spent about two weeks in Europe doing Germany, Italy, Spain, uh, Scotland, Ireland, and the UK, um, including obviously the the annual uh, November UK shows in Liverpool this time. Uh, I think they're at the O2 in April next year, so I'm hopefully going to try and attend one of them. So they're, they're in Liverpool this year, and uh, I said to, obviously, anybody who doesn't know, the WWE Network was supposed to be released on October 1st, got delayed, was then supposed to be released on November 1st, and then on November 1st, at 20 to 8 in the evening, 20 minutes yeah. before it was supposed to launch, whoosh, they severed the ties. Uh, delayed? Definitely. WWE came out and said, Delayed indefinitely, can't say anything, and then rumors started to swell. And it's, this has been going around for a couple of months, but rumors started to swell that it was basically a problem with B Sky B, which is Sky, which is our satellite service over in the UK that holds the WWE license. And it's them coming out. The rumors coming out is that they don't want obviously people to buy the network because in theory the network is cheaper than buying a premium rate package and then having to buy Sky Sports on top of that, which is. Apparently, the reason to nix it in the butt and try and do a TV channel instead, because obviously, if it's a TV channel, then you can have it as a premium base channel, which means Sky get the money back. Yeah. So, which is why it seems delayed indefinitely. Um, people have actually rung up Sky's helpline, and they've said actually, it's not our fault that Sky is. It's not our fault that the network is not coming over to the UK. It's actually WWE's fault, and the fact that apparently they don't want to bring it to the UK just yet because they're not ready with the infrastructure. So, obviously, they're both trying to battle each other at loggerheads. So this led all to the entire thing I put on Twitter, I think was it the week of the European tour, saying basically, I hope WWE realise that they've got to be careful with what they do this week, because otherwise there's going to be some angry fans at Raw. There were some angry fans at Raw. Yeah. Well, and, and, and rightfully so. I guess that there was a... Uh, Vince had a, a ex explanation on why the network wasn't coming and an apology to fans that came out to the live shows and he got booed each time. Uh, they, they played the message. They uh, taped over, because now all the ring aprons say WWE Network because that is the only thing that they want to plug, but for the UK where it's not available, they put some uh, you know gaffer's tape over it to, uh, to, to make sure that people weren't taunted by the glittering lore of, of the, uh, the, the network. But... You know, it's uh, it's gonna happen. I mean, the, the question, I mean, what what I've been told or, or or made to understand rather about the network in the UK is the problem is is bandwidth and making it pay for itself without making it more expensive. Um, but from from a as, from a provider side, as a as an as an internet based network, that is the problem. But the biggest problem yeah. at the moment is it being a TV channel because as if it's a TV ch and this is where it gets even weirder WWE can only be shown at like 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning generally um, they will show like they will show like WWE stars and experience on a Sunday morning because you know they can sort of get away with it because that's the magazine show because that's when they can show the more talky bits and the rest of the wrestling but a lot of the times the wrestling um, and the biggest worry is, even though it's a premium-based service, because of like weird UK laws, they can in theory say the network does not go on until like after eight o'clock, which would mean you would only get seven, eight hours of content. And then in theory, because it's the UK, they could probably choose what goes on and what goes off. So it gets real awkward. But 
I, and this I, is why we had to declare independence from you guys. Just all this <laughs> BS, you know? Like, this is why we had to leave. And just, I'm just like, I don't want to bring up old wounds, but come on. And it's, well, I, I, I made a really crap joke at the time saying it should be called, in the UK, it should be called the WWE not work because, well, wow. it doesn't work. It doesn't. No. It, it, but, it's, uh, well, here, let's, let's focus on, I mean, listen, uh, we, we can all agree that the network is awesome. It's what has gotten me back into wrestling. Uh, it is just, uh, you know, I had a moment where I was just sitting on the couch and, uh, you know, hanging out with a friend of mine last um, on Friday, and we're like, you want to know what? Let's watch an awesome Survivor Series that either of us have, have ever seen. And so we just looked it up, and both of us weren't watching in, in 01, so we watched the 01 Survivor Series, which paid off. Oh, the, the, alliance, the, alliance the, angle. the alliance angle, the invasion angle, the uh, and it was the alliance angle. All right, listen. Say what you will about that angle, which I mean, like uh, I, I was not watching week after week. I, I don't remember uh, it, so I can't comment on the angle. That pay per view is a masterpiece. That pay per view is great on every level. Like the storytelling is great, the finishes are great. Heyman and Jr. as the uh, as, as the announcing uh, duo are. I mean, it might. I think it's it's Heyman's greatest announcing work. Like he is like so many times, especially in the last ten years, you've seen, you know, like Michael Cole or you know play a heel announcer or, or a more like in character announcer, right? Mm. Uh, and it always is just grading and taking away from what's on, you know, what's what's in front of you and everything. It, it was amazing to watch that done right. To watch Heyman be able to be in character, needling Jr. Like coming out of the the uh, match to like the two shot of them at the desk and him just like breaking the the the, the promo setup just to screw with Jr. And, and Jr. reacting perfectly, just you know. Jim Cornette could replace you tomorrow. Like, you know, just getting, like, angry, squabbly. It was so great. And, and, and I would highly recommend people going back to watch that. And don't let the, you know, how weird that invasion angle got, you know, uh, tainted. I, I, I will agree. If you take that event as a separate event, it's a masterpiece. But yeah. as, as, soon as, you put log, as soon as you put logic into it and you realize how that all, ended up, how that all ended up to that event, you just want to kill yourself, not kill yourself, but you just want to like go, why did you make that event? Like, I mean, but it's, it's, it's something, uh, you know, what, what's amazing about it is that really, it, it's the pay-per-view we always, it, it, it's amazing that it is a WCW-involved pay-per-view that, like, they, they talk about WCW because it's the greatest WCW pay-per-view that we never saw. It, it, it's the blow-off pay-per-view to the NWO that we all really wanted. You know, we wanted the big winner-take-all Team NWO versus Team WCW for, you know, Nitro the next week would be, you know, uh, would be NWO Nitro. And we got things like that, but we never got, you know, when WCW wins, uh, an NWO shirt is never seen in, in the arena again or something like that, uh, mm -hmm. which would have, I mean, that, that's what you needed. You needed that. And then you can always bring them back, right? You know, you can always resurface them, but it's like, that's, that's the it did a great job of just ending it like that is a blow off here's the funny thing on I'm trying to think which game it was I think it was WWE was it 12 or 13 no it was 12 WWE 12 they done a career mode where you played as three wrestlers you played as Sheamus you played as Triple H and you played as the creed wrestler and it yeah. kind of it was kind of like a each storyline interweaved with the other eventually, so you started off with Sheamus, and then Sheamus faced Triple H at SummerSlam, um, and then you then you went into Triple H's story, and Triple H's story went all the way up until like October, and then you played as your created guy. Your created guy's story was almost like if the invasion was done right, in which I'm not Joe Six Elimination Tag Team match at WrestleMania, in which the Team WCW won, and They've done the whole thing, right? The credits going up, and you're thinking, "Oh, great, that's the end of the thing." You know, Team WCW wins, and then all of a sudden the credits stop, and it's Kevin Nash in the ring going, "Fooled you, didn't I?" And then the next month you build up to uh, a final matches, which is War Games. And yeah. It's, and it's oh, that's great. 
it's a really, it's a really, really good storyline for that like final six months. If you're going to be on Xbox 360 and get a copy of WWE 12, it's a very, very interesting storyline because it's done in a way that makes you think. Because it's yeah. not just, a, it's not just a case of oh, we're going to get the bad guys and the good guys. It is literally like oh, we'll get Rey Mysterio. Rey Mysterio is a massive guy in WWE. Well, he joins WCW, and you're like, yeah, whoa. Well, that that was one of the biggest criticisms about that angle, though, right? Is that like the the, the alliance was half. WWE guys that had just defected, in a, you know. In a, that, in, a, in a WWF and w versus WCW uh, match, I think eight of the guys were actual WWF contract. Well, the final four wrestlers. were Kurt Angle, Stone Cold for the Alliance, and, and The Rock and Jericho for WWE. Although, here's the one thing about that, that, that pay-per-view, that 01 Survivor Series. Guess how many times Rock gets the microphone. It's got to be a ridiculous amount, isn't it? I mean, he's I'm, the hottest person. He had just gotten done filming Scorpion King. This is like, he could not be bigger. I haven't watched this in ages. I've got to say, it's got to be at least double figures, because he must have always had that mic in his hand. Zero. N not a single rock promo. The entire pay-per-view. He doesn't Whoa. talk at all. And he wins the main event that he pins... Stone Cold clean uh, at the end to save WWF, and he gets nothing. He doesn't even talk at all. Yeah, because like, he doesn't even get a backstage segment. Booker T gets a backstage segment. Test gets a backstage segment. The Rock, nothing. Although Vince, a lot of Vince talking, which I know is another criticism of the invasion angle, is that it became uh, a, a McMahon angle, you know. Uh, <laughs> But, but but it's always was it was it the winner is always written well sorry history is always written by the winners. He bought well, WCW. No, I mean, of course I, I, he's going to The criticism of that of that angle was that like instead of it just being about the wrestlers and about WCW and ECW joining up to overtake WWF, uh, it became about Vince and Stephanie and Shane, uh, who again I'll tell you it's been so long since I had watched a Shane McMahon match or because he's involved in that. In that Survivor Series, it's amazing how good of a wrestler he is. Like, he is. It's insane how crazy he is. Well, and he doesn't really do anything crazy in this match, but it's just like he's it, his ring psychology is just so good. So he basically spends the first part of the match when it's all five on five. Uh, the Alliance guys keep getting into trouble, and Shane's the one who keeps coming into the ring and breaking up the pin. Like, nobody else does it. So Shane's just kind of a pest. And it's just, like, breaking up the pins. That's the only thing he's doing. He never gets tagged in. And then, I forget who it is. It's Big Show, I think. They hit, like, four of their finishers. Like, it's like an angle slam. Uh, you know, RVD hits the five-star frog splash. And then, finally, Shane gets tagged in, drops the big macho man elbow, and pins Big Show. Uh, and that's like that. That's his spot. But it's just it's so good. It's just it's like such great ring psychology because he's just uh, he, he just has that ability to kind of make you hate him just by his actions. Going back to the Paul Heyman thing before we move on, before we move on to Survivor Series, um, I know obviously was it they done the ECW exposed wasn't it where there was like Heyman and Joey Styles like talking yeah. about ECW and basically sort of saying like yeah. his. Did you did you watch the Rise and Fall of ECW documentary they finally aired on Friday? I think I've I, I think I saw it back when it was when it first came out on on DVD or or when it was on Netflix or something. I, I know I've seen it before. <laughs> there, there, I urge anybody seriously that is the greatest professional wrestling documentary you will ever see. The greatest. Yeah. There is one amazing bit in there. It's Paul talking about him going to Raw. Yeah. Oh, I can hear myself. Oh. Oh. Yeah, it's him talking about his. He, he's talking about going back to Raw, and um, JR saying, you know, he's saying, sort of saying to him, "Don't worry, we'll be all right. Just follow my lead. Everything's good." And there's a bit with um, Vince in the ring with Trish Stratus, and Trish yeah. is getting her top off, and obviously all the crowd are going crazy, going, "Yeah, boobs." And Heyman realizes 
oh, there's no Vince backstage, so there's no one like monitoring me. I can say yeah. whatever I want. And he goes, well, is it, I came to Washington, D.C., and I'm going to get to see Bush. That's great. And apparently he goes, like, obviously, everybody, he hears everybody in his headset panicking, and he's going, well, it's because I've got a live microphone. Obviously, I've got a live microphone, and I've just finally realized where the roof in this building is. <laughs> yes. Uh, well, you know, there's, uh, he's, he's so good. He's, he's just the best ever. And his, his breath, his understanding of wrestling is just not, you can't compare it to anybody. I mean, like, there, there are, like, you can only compare it to the best. Like, he just understands what people want uh, on such an innate level. His, his, his mind. His way of just like, look at was it was it he called it was it the SmackDown Six in two thousand and two? He had was yeah. it? Yeah. It was Edge. Get this right. On. Edge. Mysterio. Edge. Eddie Guerrero. Mysterio. Angle. Angle. Benoit. Benoit. Yeah. And I think God, Undertaker. Think might have been. But his SmackDown Six. But you think about all of them. Every single one of them became one of the biggest stars in WWE yeah. in ten well, in those ten years. The guy, the guy's a genius. The guy is he can see talent ten years from where they're going to be. He, uh, he he's the only man in the history of wrestling that I've been able to see that a guy can literally go, "That guy's good. I'll have him." Yeah. Well, you know, he, he certainly uh, he certainly has an eye for it, and and that's why it's so exciting whenever you see him down at. Uh, the the NXT uh, performance center because I feel like they they have such a great a great group of, of of performers down there that like to to see them under his tutelage is always exciting. The the idea of having Heyman Triple H and Undertaker down at the NXT performance center actually helping out the young guys is amazing. The idea that they're basically imparting the future is. Yeah, I don't. I think Undertaker just stopped by though, right? Like, I mean, they're probably going to... I know he's got a, he's got a job there, but I think that might just be like Undertaker shows up at the Performance Center four times a year and WWE has a reason to keep paying him for life. Put it this way. If I was in, if I was in the Performance Center and Taker came in, I'd shut up and listen. Oh, God, yeah. I mean, he's, 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 he's always been known as, like, the wrestler's wrestler, you know, the, the, the leader of the locker room and stuff like that. Look for a thing called Wrestler's Court. That's all I'm going to say. Oh God, wrestlers court. Uh, <laughs> right. So, so all right. Oh, oh, by the way, here's a real quick tip for anybody listening. There is. Let me see if I can find the link. I found it on the squared circle, but it's a YouTube clip that's just audio. That is called. I think the video is called "Just an Hour of Scott Steiner Stories." Oh God. Uh, the Steiner brothers and Scott Steiner in particular might be the most entertainingly batshit insane people that have ever laced up boots. Like, and that is a colorful cast of characters. Uh, <laughs> there is just like the uh, the stories of like them just like taping guys down to things and putting stuff up their butts and like pulling guns on people in the locker room, like. Just insane. Insanity. I'm trying to find you and I will see the link. I don't know if you've ever heard about this. In TNA, they done a whole... You know the New Blood Millionaires feud in WCW? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. They done that in TNA. They done that in TNA with main event Mafia versus the TNA Frontline. The main event Mafia sure. was, Sting, was Sting, Angle, Steiner, Nash, and Booker T. And they had an entire first half of a TNA episode, which was nothing... But uh, a NWO ripoff, where it's basically oh like this, sh this show is brought to you by the main event mafia. Scott Steiner was the ring announcer. Oh no, I've seen that. I've seen that clip. It's so good. <laughs> where was it? Where was it Team 3D? Was it from the halls? It was it from the halls of Dunkin' Donuts? From the great state of obesity. Scott Steiner ring announcer. Here we go. <laughs> oh, 
By the way, the greatest opponent that Scott Steiner has ever faced is his own literacy. I love, I love the the my, my favorite part of that in freezing because who knew these referees have even got names? Oh my god, I know. And also, it's just like he's so struggling to read the stuff off the sheet. It's like as soon as he's yelling at the crowd, he's so comfortable, but he just does not like reading. You can tell. And it gets even better. I don't know if you've watched that inside first half of the episode. It's Kevin Nash and Booker T on commentary. Is was it as Chet Snow and Black Lemon? <laughs> That's so great. Uh, all right, hey, you want to get to the uh, Survivor Series card? We shall. I'm, I'm going to have to watch that TNA show afterwards. But yes, let's definitely do that. Oh, and here we go. No, I'm seeing it right here. It's uh, one hour and 30 minutes of Scott Steiner stories. Uh, it, it's there on YouTube. Just search. That's the title. Is one hour and 30 minutes of Scott Steiner stories. Here, actually, before we get into it, let's just go. I'm going to go to a random point. A random Scott Steiner story. Let's see if this works. You're there. It means it doesn't look like a stage to be predetermined. You, what you want to do is you want to put a sense of... Uh, nah. Just you stood up to Steiner. Don't think you're a demigod. <laughs> <laughs> I go, really? You're a really? Get the fuck out of here. So do a demigod me. Diamond so Dallas Page, ladies and gentlemen. All right, let's let's talk. I mean, there's not. I guess there's not a whole lot on the card right now. Uh, you have the Divas match. You have the, the Bray Ambrose match, and you have the still. We don't know exactly. I think we we know Team Authority. No, no, no. We know Team Cena. We don't know Team Authority. Ooh, ooh. Oh, there we go. Sorry, I just I had internet lag there. Uh, we we don't. So yeah, do, yeah. But what what are the state of these teams right now? We have with Team Cena, John Cena, Dolph Ziggler, Big Show, Sheamus, and a fifth guy to be announced. Team Authorities is Seth Rollins, Kane, Mark Henry, Rusev, and a fifth guy to be announced. So Ryback's the fifth guy on Cena, right? I have this weird feeling there's going to be a turn at Survivor Series and it's going to involve Ryback. But it's just on which team is he with to begin at the start of the match. So wait, you, so you don't think that, that, that Ryback settles on one of them by the blow-off Raw? No. I think somehow he either gets involved in the match and alludes to being a favoured of that team, i.e. he looks to be the good guy at the moment who will go with Team Cena and then somehow on Survivor Series he'll do the he'll do the Kurt Angle whoopsie doodle, I'm going to be on the opposite side now. Yeah. But, but let me, right here, let, let's get into fantasy booking. What if this? He says uh all right, I'm going to be on Team Cena because fuck the authority. Um, I'm with my bros here. And so now you have Steph, Triple H. This is their phony baloney jobs. You know, they got to make sure that uh, all this stuff gets gets uh, goes the way that it's supposed to. Enter stage left. The oily yet placid calm of Paul Heyman. He says, well... If you have an empty spot, there's always the reigning, defending, undisputed WWE champion, his client, Brock Lesnar. And now that's your that's your team authority. I've just got a text from Kieran. I'll just show that. He probably won't go through clearly. But all I've got on there is, Internet's died, go on without me. If not back by tomorrow, avenge death. Predictions are authority, AJ, and what for matches announced. So look, Ben. Uh, I guess, all right, so so let's let's go over what uh, the, the other two, the other two, like, the, do you think that they, I mean, I think that they might have Nikki go over AJ. 
Um, at, at this point, yeah. yeah. Unless you believe the, the, the backstage rumor that a Total Divas cast member can't hold the belt. Um, I personally... Well, they're saying that the reason that is happening is because apparently the show is four months behind what actually happens, so apparently it'd be confusing for people to realise that, but then surely that... Uh, yeah, I, I, I think Nikki's winning, otherwise it wouldn't make sense. Why would, why would you just say Nikki gets the title match and not have a win? I mean, it would give... Like, AJ's so good, and, and I... I I really liked the the stuff that they had with Paige earlier this year, where it was like they were friends and they weren't, and they were crazy, and like that was like really really good. But like I just kind of feel like there's just been a lot of nothing but AJ smiling and skipping for the last like three months. There really hasn't been a whole lot for her to do. Uh, I would like to have, you know, I think if if you go to a program where you you are working Nikki against AJ and you have Brie you know, playing some kind of role in, in everything, like, that could be cool. I like that. I've just realized something. Um, Survivor Series, obviously, is November 23rd. Hell in a Cell was October 26th. That means that Bree's services to Nikki ends the following week. Yeah. So, I have, again, pu putting everything out there, Bree helps Nikki win the belt at Survivor Series, but then, because the contract essentially ends, Brie loses it on that. Oh, sorry, Nikki loses it on that SmackDown because there's nobody to help her. Yeah, I'll tell you what. Now you're now you're putting on a thinking cap there. <laughs> I get one good idea every year. That's good. That's good. Uh, all right. So do we both have Nikki going over AJ? Uh, Nikki going over AJ with some help from Brie because she doesn't want to do it, but Nikki makes her do it. Yeah. Um, unless Brie costs her the match by by botching the 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 help or whatever, it gets DQ'd because she's too obvious about handing her a chair or something. Uh, mm -hmm. And now you set up another another thing. But I, I, you actually, you know what? I'm going. I'm going the opposite way. I'm gonna go AJ. I go AJ. Well, actually, actually, I've got TLC next month, so they could easily do like a Nikki versus Bree like tables match or a or a ladder match like for. I would love to see. Ship. I would love to see AJ, AJ and uh, and Paige in one of those gimmick matches. I feel like they could do a really good job with that. Well, if it's anything like the last couple of years, TLC it used to be TLC was every single match was the component of the TLC, then the final match was the TLC. Last yeah. year was just a TLC match, I think it was. I don't think there was anything else. So I don't know what they're doing this year, but it would be great if this year was everything is TLC related. Uh, well, who knows? I mean, I hope that they just kind of scale down some of these gimmick things. Like, I'm glad they got rid of Elimination Chamber, and now it's just going to be another pay-per-view. Yeah, I wonder what that pay-per-view is actually going to be. I think it's called Fast Lane or something like that. So who knows... I think it might still have that like road to WrestleMania stipulation kind of stuff to it. Here's an, here's an interesting fact. In Germany, they can call it Elimination Chamber. They what? In Germany, they actually couldn't call the event Elimination Chamber because of laws regarding Nazi imagery. Oh. It well. had to be called uh, No Escape. Learn something new every day. And it turns out they got a, uh, you know, in Germany, the Elimination Chamber isn't just a gimmick. Uh, and the other one, so, also I know, is, is a fatal four-way. Right. You can't call a fatal four-way fatal four-way in France. It's like four-way free. Really? Mm -hmm. Frogs. I only, uh, I only knew that. I only know that because actually, I'm not joking. Like in 2010, they had one pay-per-view called Fatal Four Way. Well, yeah, that was and that was the NXT pay per view, right? The NXT uh, was, was was fatal four way, uh, the most, no, the no, last no, one, was, NXT takeover. No, no. This wasn't the NXT. There was an actual WWE pay per view in 2010 called Fatal Four Way. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, no, yeah, no, but that was that like like that's what they called NXT takeover. The most recent no, no. one was like no, no, was no, fatal yeah, four way. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, they had a pay-per-view in 2010, four years ago, called Fatal 4-Way, which was essentially like a, a 
sub debut of the Nexus. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, all right. Well, Bray versus Dean. Who, who goes over, and what do you want to see? Like this match is done. Are, are you done with them? Like, do you want more of this? I think it's been kind of underwhelming. I mean, the promo work has been really good, but it hasn't exactly popped. I, I feel like WWE has really written themselves into a corner with this. Like, Bray has mystical powers. Stuff and you know, turning on the lights, turning off the lights, taunting, you know, kind of stuff. I like, I, I'd like to see him just mix it up a little bit more, not be so removed. Especially with if if this Bray Wyatt thing is true, and he's gotten rid of Harper and Rowan in favor of this, was it the Ascension now? Apparently, um, yeah. I don't know. I. L- I like the idea of Bray Wyatt being this new pseudo Undertaker, essentially. Like he's yeah. now the, he's now the new yeah. flicker the lights. I'm the bad guy. Ooh, look at me, I'm the spooky guy. But it's, it's you can't always read. You can't always retrain the wheel. You can't always retrain and do the same thing over and over again. Kane worked. Undertaker worked. It's not yeah. working. With Bray Wyatt. I mean. Partially because he talks too much. Like, I I feel like you can do one or the other. Like, he can be the creepy guy who comes out and talks. Or he can be the super mysterious guy who just shows up and doesn't talk. But, like, every other person that that you've named that ran that gimmick didn't really talk a lot, you know? Sting didn't really talk a lot when he was doing the Turn Off the Lights gimmick. Kane didn't really talk a lot when he was doing the Turn Off the Lights gimmick. Like, it was just its own thing. With Bray, he does He's so great on the mic that it's like, you just need... To have, he's great in the ring. He's great on the mic. And and when you make him this monster with the with the big shadow, it we know he does these other two things well. So we're just frustrated that he's not doing it. And also, I think the other my other big thing about Bray is that we want to cheer him. We want him to torment bad guys because if he's doing everything he's doing right now. But he's going after Seth Rollins. I feel like we're he's way over. Is 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 that, is that a difficult thing? Because again, Kane as a face worked. Taker as a face worked. Would Bray Wyatt in the current gimmick he has, doing nothing but attacking the bad guys, would it work? I don't uh, he does, he cuts face promos now. I mean, like, all of his promos are about, you know, oh, the, the people that doubted me. And, and, you know, like, if you just tone down the megalomania five degrees, right? And, and it's not just, like, I am the healer of, of the world. But even then, if it's like, I'm going to correct the world, I'm going to fix the world, and the problem with the world are sellouts like Seth Rollins, ah, huge pop, right? Like, everybody, uh, he does so many face things. He, he gets the cheap pop. He does the Mick Foley cheap pop when he comes to the ring. Hmm, that, that, that's true. I'm just trying to think, because obviously Detroit I'm trying to think. Detroit metro area. We're here. Everybody loves it. He, All right. People are raising the, up their cell phones. Let, 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 let's take this, okay, then. He turns face. Because for me, Survivor Series, I, mean, I know it's, Survivor Series for me is always my, well, is always my, like my beginning of WrestleMania. It sort of yeah. gives me the idea of like, okay, this is where they're going. Where do you see Bray Wyatt at WrestleMania next year? Because at the moment, I have absolutely no idea what he's going to do. Well, here's the problem. The problem is that the reason why they won't turn him face is that you know, name the other non-authority bad guys. All the bad guys, all the heels are in the authority. The major heels that could like sell a pay-per-view are in the authority. So they need bad guys that aren't there. Actually, that's a really good point. Imagine now I'm trying to sit here and think, who are the bad guys? I mean, Rusev. It's Rusev, Bray Wyatt, and maybe Cesaro. You know, like those are the people that that you can match up with your faces uh, in in a pay-per-view. They have a lack of bad guys. Yeah, because then if yeah, because yeah, because 
Well, the, if you, if you go back to the Survivor Series match, it, it looks like it's going to be Luke Harper being the fifth guy of Team Authority. Yeah. So, I don't know. Could you say Bray White could pull double duty and be in the Team Cena camp? But then would people be, hold no. on a minute, Cena and, White, Cena and White had that massive feud for most of 2014? Well, I mean, listen, Survivor Series is all about strange bedfellows, which is why Mark Henry has already completely forgotten that Rusev was the reason that he is in his current downward spiral attacking his friends, you know? Uh which, by the way, True. it is kind of amazing that, that Big Show and Mark Henry like, are still as compelling as they are in the ring like this this many years into things. I swear to God, they have actually, each other have turned on each other every single year for like the last four years. Like it, yeah. Mark, Hen- Mark Henry turned, then Big Show turned, then Mark Henry turned back, and then Big Show turned back. <laughs> yeah. The, 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 there's an old wrestling joke that goes that every single year Big Show turns heel at least once a year. <laughs> well, that's it's like the changing of the seasons. And I think if you actually re- if you actually go through Big Show year by year, he does actually turn heel every single year. That's funny. Uh, so, all right, so uh, uh, Bray, Bray Wyatt and, and, and Dean Ambrose, who do you got winning? Um. <sighs> Let's see, because Dean lost at Hell in a Cell. Was Bray in a match at Hell in a Cell? No, Bray ended Dean's match at Hell in a Cell. Yes, he did, didn't he? Yeah, because they had the... The The Mega Man hologram. Yeah. Which was, apparently, I've read also, was it the the voice and all the noise was a Bray White promo play backwards, apparently. It was him doing what, backwards? Apparently, it was a Bray White promo play backwards. Oh, really? That's crazy. Yeah, apparently I I don't know I don't know if people have been able to figure out which one it was, but from what I've heard, apparently it might be one of his opening ones when he first started in the company, like doing oh, okay. the whole kind of like we're here, we're coming close. So, so I guess that's where you could say he's doing the whole anti, he's doing the whole I'm completely devil, I'm you know, but. It's, if if Dean Ambrose wins, do they have to kill the few? Um, I don't know. I, I it depends on what you want to do with Dean next, you know? Because Dean, if you look at this, if, if if Survivor Series isn't the beginning of WrestleMania, it's certainly the beginning of the Royal Rumble, right? Absolutely. Because and, the Royal, if you don't take TLC, the Royal Rumble is the next pay per view. Yeah, so it's like. You could probably blow off Bray versus Dean at TLC. Yeah. So that might go. So if that's the case, then you probably have uh, maybe Bray win, and then Dean wins at, at TLC. And then, like, Dean would make... I mean, Dean is very much, you know, the, the, the kind of prototypical, he's the wild card, he could win. I mean, he, he I, I could see him being, like, the final four or the final two at, at, at the Royal Rumble, in the Royal Rumble. Like, uh, just being very, uh, being one of the guys that, that's close to winning and probably not winning. So do you, do you see, how about this, at Royal Rumble, the final, let's say five, you have all three members of the Shield, so Reigns, Rollins, and um, Ambrose. Stick yep. in another member of the Authority in there. What do you want? Put Bray Wyatt in there. Yeah. And then that way, to me, you put those five in there. I mean, obviously, Kane's there to do the whole Rollins deal, but those four in there... You can say those are the four we're focusing on. There are guys for WWE for the next couple of years. Those are the people we want you to look at and say they're WWE. Yeah, and it's exciting if that's the case because they're all really good. So here's an interesting thing. Then, so like I said, obviously this is my I use Survivor Series as a WrestleMania build-up. Yeah. Where do you think this all leads up to with WrestleMania? Where do you see WrestleMania leading up to? Uh, hopefully a good place. I mean, I, I think 
you've got a lot of interesting pieces that you can shake up in a lot of different ways. I, I, I hoped that the Hell in a Cell ending was WWE, for, for Rollins and Ambrose, was WWE saying, okay, we can't blow this off right now. We gotta save this for WrestleMania. Let's make let's make this the WrestleMania feud. The the Rollins Ambrose. We 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 blow that off at WrestleMania, um, which I'm I would be very excited about. And then I don't know. I mean, it it, it sounds like they really are, are still got a, they have a boater for Reigns going over Lesnar at, at at WrestleMania. I think that could be a good match. I don't think it's it's. I think it'll be outshone if if you have Rollins and Ambrose on the card. I think they're going to probably put on the best match, the most memorable match. Uh, but who knows? I think things change so so fast that like, you know, right at, at, at the turn of the year last year, WWE was very convinced that their WrestleMania 30 main event was going to be face Batista versus Randy Orton. You know, like mm. they were sure of that. And then everything changed, and they got one of the best WrestleManias in history because they had Daniel Bryan wrestling two amazing matches on the same card. So now, I mean, you said this back when we were talking SummerSlam. Do you still believe that if Batista was to come back now, would he be more perceived as, or would he be more liked as a face now rather than then before? Oh, he's a face. Guardian? You can't you can't bring him back as a heel now because of Guardians. Mm-hmm. Because he's a massive star in with a extraordinarily likable character that wasn't all that different than who he is, right? Like he's a big, goofy, lovable guy, and he plays a big, goofy, lovable character in Guardians of the Galaxy. They just need to have him be sort of more of him, you know. And and the, the yeah, he can't go back. He can't go back to being a heel unless you make him do something really despicable. So, I mean, you, you've always been, you've always said, obviously, you know, like the John Cena and the heel turn, and I've heard so many other people talking about it. What would be your John Cena and heel turn? What would be your thing to say to the world, this is how you turn John Cena heel? Well, so here's the reason why he hasn't been here. He hasn't been a heel because the same reason why when you're talking about the bad guys, right? Like, you need, like, it's like with betting, right? When you set a betting line, you're not setting it because you think that's what the outcome will be. You, you set a betting line because you want to generate the most amount of action that will come in on both sides. Yep. For your roster, a, a professional wrestling roster, you need to have an equal amount of good, you know, good guys that fight for truth, justice, and, and the American way, and bad guys that are menacing shit heels. Right now... If you turn John Cena heel, it is a nuclear like explosion. It is a huge black hole. And you need a good guy, a face of equal caliber to shut him up. You know, or else you've wasted. Like, you know, if if you just run Sheamus against him, you know, and, and, and you know, Sheamus is the one to shut him up, then why? You know, you can have that match no matter what, like, and, and really Sheamus doesn't get over with the crowd. That's got to be something that you have somebody go from a good baby face to a main event baby face. So he's got to be and someone that can build the scene of week then. So that's why if you look at, like, Roman Reigns, that's what they want to make Roman Reigns from a guy to the guy. They think that he has the look. They think that he has the talent. They think that he has... Everything that they need to do it, you just need seasoning. But if you wanted to give him that big moment, the 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 John Cena that sells out to the authority and is like, well, you want to know what? I'm tired of getting my ass kicked. Uh, you, you you stupid kids never gave me anything. All I had to do was just come out here and be Mickey Mouse while I get booed by people. Uh, well, you want to know what? I'm sick of it. And that's why I just punched this child with lupus. Uh, now you have Roman Reigns come in and, you know, shows him what for and yells believe that and then we're done. I, like, uh, I, think, I think the majority of the whole scene of heel turn is just how it is initially handled. I think afterwards you've got 
anything you can do. It's just how do you turn him heel is, is the question. Well, you I mean, can't, you, you, see, you I, can't I, just, I, I, I disagree. You can't I just mean, turn, you turn him heel very easily. You, 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 I mean, like, how he turns heel is kind of inconsequential to me. It's, it's who do you pay it off with? You know? Who, um, who, do, who does he pay it off Well, yeah, I mean, who are, yeah, who do you match him up with? Like, you now have a really hot angle, but it only matters if there's both sides to it. The only person that he could do it with at the moment is Roman Reigns, because Roman Reigns, it's either Roman Reigns or Dean Ambrose, so, but then again, at the same time, they did see Ren Ambrose, and the crowd were 60-40 for Ambrose. Well, I mean, imagine if they were 100-0 for Ambrose, you know, if, if Cena was a heel. You know, they would all be they would all be cheering for Ambrose, which is what you want, you know, if you're trying to manipulate the crowd. You want that fevered, you want that whole arena-wide yes chant like they had last year. If you want to manipulate the crowd, what you do is you put out a 69-year-old owner of a company to come out and say, just enjoy it, damn it. That is oh, I'm tired, damn it. Uh, all right, so I have, I have Bray winning. Do you have Bray winning? I think I've got Bray winning definitely for this one. So Team Authority versus Team Cena. The authority's authority is on the line by way of the supreme authority, Vince McMahon. So the authority is winning. Well, they're not going to why break up the do you game. do that angle if you don't? Well, it's like it's like you know the like 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 the the, the the Bella stipulation, right? It's like the only thing that's interesting is if Bree has to be Nikki's personal assistant. You know why? The, like, it's not interesting if the authority wins. It's interesting if the authority loses. Because if the authority loses, then it turns into rather than it being a power rather than it being a power struggle of the corporate guys have finally got over it, then turns back into the it's a McMahon storyline again, and it's the McMahons fighting against each other, and then it'll probably end up with Triple H and Vince McMahon, and that's a match I don't want to see again. Uh, listen, I'm, I'm put me down. I have Team Cena winning. I have the authority being uh, de-authoritized. And then Vince McMahon comes out, says, ladies and gentlemen, you're new, raw, GM. Points to the Titan Tron and cult of personality plays. CM Punk is your new raw GM. Bearing in mind what we spoke about off air, that's 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 a giant step. <laughs> it's also not happening. But yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I do I do have the authority winning. Uh, I, I or sorry, the authority losing. Uh, I think Team Cena is going to win. Uh, I think okay. it might come at the cost of, ch of some chicanery. If yeah, I, I think it's uh, yeah. Okay, that's here, my here's the thing also because it's Survivor Series. Obviously, it's the Elimination Tag Team match. Who's your survivors then of Team Cena? Who gets who gets who's your survivors and who gets the deciding fall? Who gets the winning fall? The winning fall is Cena over Rollins. And I think it's, 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 it's the captains. And 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 of Team Cena, who stays? Just Cena? Like he's the only one that survives the lot. Yeah, I think you you have you know the. the Ends the ranks until it's five on one, and then Cena overcomes the odds. I do you know what? Again, I would love to see that happen, just so I could see the internet explode in rage. Yeah, yeah. I I don't know if I've told you about this, but seriously, follow a guy called Unscore at Done with WWE. He retweets people who say they're done with WWE for the stupid reason. Oh, that's great. And it is quite entertaining. Every single pay per view, every single raw. I literally, I'm done with WWE. How can you desecrate the US? I.e., because I gave Ruth the US title. That's so great. That's so great. I love Ruth as the US champ. It's so amazing. Work this one out. You have you have an Irish guy versus a Russian guy in an English city. For the United States Championship. Only in the WWE. <laughs> so only in the WWE can you see it. 
And by the way, a Russian guy played by a Bulgarian guy with a Floridian for a uh, a, a valet. Russian, yeah. He, yeah, that would be one of the one of the, the Florida State cowgirls, uh, which is like about as as American as you can get. Uh, you know, a, 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 a girl dressed in a sexy outfit at a college football game. So, I mean, I think was it they they've announced potentially there's going to be a tag title match as well between was it I think is it um, the the Dust Brothers and I think uh, God the Usos again I think I've read. Well, no, they're mixing up all the all, all the all the tag teams, right? Because they had the Matadors go over the, the the Dust Brothers in single competition with like the uh, with like the distraction. So I wouldn't be surprised if it was a Dust Brothers versus. Usos versus Matadors versus uh, uh, who else? Who else would be in that tag team mix? Slater Gator, maybe. Possibly. I've actually, <clears throat> oh God, I've actually just thought of something the Authority could do. Because whilst they're still under power, Dolph Ziggler is still the Intercontinental Champion. So what's not to say he doesn't have to pull double duty that night? Oh yeah. He has to defend the Intercontinental Championship, put him up against, I don't know, a, a big guy that's not in the Elimination Tag Team match, watch him get absolutely battered, but still retain the space, absolutely battered. Goes into well, the that, would be setting up, that would be setting up Ziggler for quite a... I mean, like, you know, I think the, 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 the internet wrestling community would be very, very happy with that, because that's their boy getting a, getting a real big spot. They did. You know? they, they did. They did. That a couple of years ago, when Zack Ryder was getting huge and Ziggler beat him, yeah, um, it was a Survivor Series, and then he was in a Survivor Series elimination match. And at the end of the Zack Ryder match for the U.S. title, he goes, "Who's going to follow me?" And then he walks out for his elimination cha- elimination um, tag team match, and he goes, "I know, I'll follow me." That's funny. <laughs> uh, oh yeah, I'll, I'll send you the Twitter link and other bits and pieces. But yeah, I think that's pretty much it because Survivor Series has been a pretty quiet. It's been a quick pretty quiet Survivor Series this year, which is interesting and also well, a bit yeah, worrying. Yeah, I think it's like, there's just all the focus has been, I mean, like, well, and, and, you know, Ryback has been a huge part of it. It's really good to see him reestablished as, uh, as as a top guy. Although I loved his his uh, his final Rybacksel promo with, uh, with, with, with Curtis Axel. Did you see that on SmackDown? Mm-hmm. So good. Uh, uh, I'm, 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 so I yeah I have Team Cena, A uh, yes Team Cena AJ and Bray. So you're going with a possible full face win? No Bray. I have Bray over Dean. So it's Bray. So we're just sort of saying Bray's pseudo face at the moment. He's like going between Gray. No Bray's Bray's a heel. I mean Bray's doing heel things. Bray's bringing up Dean's family issues. That's that's not a thing that faces do. Oh, also for the record, before we before we go, Randy Orton's RKO to Seth Rollins a couple of weeks ago when he first left the authority is probably one of the best RKOs I've ever seen. Uh, yeah, it's also out of nowhere, you know, which is always a, a real key part of the RKO. Um, yeah, it's a. Uh, I love Randy Orton's face character. I think I, I described it on Twitter as coked up bouncer who, whilst stopping a fight at four in the morning, starts another fight. Like that's that psycho Orton. Just stomping around, being angry, fighting with evil for no reason. Ah, oh, Randy, Randy. Uh, I'm 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 really and I'm really looking forward to actually Survivor Series, even though actually I won't be able to watch it because I'll be at work, so I'll be watching it Monday morning. Um, yeah. But yeah, I'm re- I'm really looking forward to this year's Survivor Series. Actually, bearing in mind they actually nearly cancelled Survivor Series altogether a couple of years ago because they thought, oh, people aren't watching it. Yeah, people aren't watching it. It's because you're not promoting it properly. They did cancel Survivor Series. They nearly did. Nearly did. They were. It was around about 2000 and again 2010. They were going to cancel it because they were saying that they were kind of bored of the idea and that they were kind of 
yeah, they didn't think the people were watching it. Yeah, the reason we weren't watching it is because you weren't putting any goddamn time into the actual point of Survivor Series. Um, yeah. No, I think it's going to be good. And then we lead up to the Royal Rumble then, which will be, uh, I think is, where have they listed it this year? Uh, Pennsylvania, Philadelphia. EC Dub. EC Dub. Uh, well, you know, I, I think... Uh, it's very, uh, it's, it's going to be very, very interesting to see who comes back uh, at, at 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 the Royal Rumble. I think I, I think I speak for everybody when I when I say uh, we all we, we we should all be afraid to get some bad news. I, I, I mean, I know I said this on Twitter, and I know you commented that they so should have brought out bad news Barrett for the network fail. Oh, totally. You oh, can't. you wanted to sign up for the network? I'm afraid. Well, I'm afraid I've got some bad news. <laughs> oh. uh, all right, man. Well, uh, good stuff. Right. Thank you, everybody, for listening to this. Um, watch us as... I think I assume Justin, you're probably going to do some kind of live watching thing over Survivor Series. Yeah. Cool beans. Yeah, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll do a live stream and we'll all hang out together and have a good time. So check it out, DiamondClub.tv. And and everybody and everybody should be able to watch it because the network is free ninety nine if you live in America and you're not in the UK where it doesn't exist. Except if you except if you have a VPN when it does. <laughs> Eventually. One day. Yeah, one day as a channel when it probably costs five times as much. So you, then you go buy a VPN and it costs five times as less. Yep. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for listening to this. Also, by the way, where can people follow you, Justin, if they want to listen to your... Uh, Justin R. Young on Twitter. That is Justin you... R. Young on Twitter. That's where everything is. Gentlemen, thank you for listening to this, and we shall see you probably next time to do the Royal Rumble preview. Uh, absolutely. I'll be there. <laughs>